originally. The ultimate objective of the ethnic cleansing parasite project was the identification of not only languages, but of actual cultures. Language is deeply connected to ethnicity, but many languages are employed by multiple ethnic groups, and confrontation between those ethnic groups is by no means rare. If the cleanser parasites were to be a deterrent against ethnic conflict, they had to distinguish between groups using means other than pure language. The original plan called for this to be achieved by differences in the transmission vector. Each ethnic group has different lifestyle customs and eating habits. For instance, parasites living in shallow water and taken in through the skin could be used to target rice farming groups. Or parasites using cows as their intermediate host would be ineffective against cultures that abstain from eating beef. But that is a lofty goal indeed. The current parasites mainly rely on droplet transmission. It would take extensive time to alter the transmission route. I eventually learned that the ethnic cleansers project had been shut down. It was Skullface who put it back into operation. But despite that, he told me to forget about the transmission route and just focus on language identification. I do not know why. I understand that the Chinese philosophers who discovered the relative species of parasite originally planned to develop a phonogrammic Alexia parasite. The left temporal parietal region is home to the part of the brain that identifies the phonetic symbols of the English language. They wished to create a strain that would parasitize that region and suppress its literacy functions. The brain area responsible for identifying the logographs of Chinese, meanwhile, is in the left middle frontal gyrus. Meaning that even if native speakers of Chinese were infected with the parasite, the literacy would be unaffected. Old and new, east and west, there is no limit to the delusions of those in power. But this delusion threatens to become a reality. I have to do something to stop this. There must be something I can do. Mm. It appears I was looking at things wrong. What do you mean? All of you. Until now, I had thought of your organization, Diamond Dogs, as a superorganism. Uh, you'll have to explain that one. The term refers to a unit of eusocial insects like ants or bees. While made up of many individuals, they behave as though they are one organism, with the queen as their nerve center. The close ties you share here reminded me of that. Well, the boss's efforts do pull us all together. I was not finished. I'm speaking in terms of homogeneity. You come from all walks of life, do you not? Many races and tongues, talents and pasts, complementing each other, influencing each other making Diamond Dogs the unique group that it is. Of course. We have no use for mindless drones around here. Is that so? Then perhaps an organization like yours is a truer superorganism than the ants and bees. Meaning? Most organisms adapt to their environment by coexisting with other species. Take the cow, for instance. It's rumen. The first stomach contains an incredible number of bacteria which digest the food it has consumed. Without their help, the cow could not break down the fiber in grasses. The cow has to outsource its means of survival to them. You don't say. Man is the same. Some 100 trillion bacteria live inside the human intestines. Without the bacteria, 
They could not function properly. And it does not stop there. The stomach, the mouth, the skin. Even the placenta contains bacteria that coexist with us. The same is true of parasites. In fact, the human immune system has evolved based on parasites being a part of it. Without them, the immune system can run amok and even damage other parts of the body. This is all very interesting, but what does it have to do with diamond dogs? A harmonious superorganism is made up not of a group of homogeneous individuals, but of diverse individuals that complement each other. That is what I saw in your group here. Then it occurred to me that man is a superorganism. Man's phenotype is not determined solely by his genetics. Some say if you mapped the genomes of all bacteria in the human body, the result would be over 100 times bigger than the human genome. The sum of man's genome and those of the organisms he coexist with, call it a metagenome, creates the superorganism we know as a human being. Well, now that's quite a leap. You think so? Then try a broader perspective. If our world were a human body, you would be parasites. You make a living by doing the dirty work that the world powers cannot handle themselves. From their perspective, you are likely a nuisance. But without you, pus would build up around the world, and autotoxemia, self-poisoning, would follow. The world needs your kind. Thank goodness for that. Skullface forced me to turn parasites into weapons. Creatures with which we are supposed to coexist. Meanwhile, that foundation I worked with focused solely on the human genome. Apparently thinking that manipulating it would get them whatever new form they want. Both ways are mistakes. Neither is a true superorganism. I am Dine. By speaking with those living inside me, we enhance one another and enjoy harmonious growth. Such was the original purpose of my research. You have made me remember this. <laughs> well, it's an honor. You can travel the world, but you won't find another place like this. If the whole world was like this place, I think the peoples of the world would bid farewell to fighting for good. Maybe that's what the boss wanted in the end. <laughs>